All right, let's talk Kyler Murray in the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler with another victory. And listen, say what you want about the Cardinals this season. Uh, they do look much better with Kyler out there, I think. And Kyler has, I think, at times had some really solid games. I'm not going to sit here and say he's been lighting it up. But it was a, a good quality performance here. And again, I think the question for the Cardinals is just what do you have in Kyler Murray? He, you know, had that one year where he was legitimately an MVP candidate and at one point an MVP favorite before in getting injured. Uh, he's then kind of not been quite that good, uh, you know, the, past, the most the, re the year after that, but then, you know, getting injured this year. What are we seeing with Kyler Murray? Well, we're seeing a good quarterback. How good? Well, let's get into it. Starting off with a play like this, it's going to be a zone coverage play. And really, the emergence of Trey McBride has been really fun to see. And this happens sometimes where tight ends take a little bit to get going. But once they get going, they play really good football. Trey McBride, a player who, you know... He was kind of the consensus number one tight end in his draft class, but I feel people forgot about him a little bit when he didn't, you know, get get you know a ton of yards in his rookie year or whatever. But doing a lot of good stuff here, so it's going to be zone coverage, and he's going to try and run a route over the middle. Okay, simple enough. Watch as when this play begins, you see that you know. I'll be honest, Pittsburgh not doing the best job at picking uh, up McBride, but there is some talent to that from the tight end's perspective. McBride getting to his spot quickly. That being said, Pittsburgh probably still should be doing a better job at picking this up. There is a window, and you look at Kyler Murray, he's already in the throwing motion. So this is good stuff from Kyler to just read the play quickly, because it's not like this was his only read on this play, but he read the play, knew where he had to put the football, uh, is in the throwing motion now. He's able to get the ball over, and they're able to pick up a first down. And McBride does some good stuff after the catch as well. Again, I'm not going to sit here and say that this was the greatest catch you will ever see, the greatest play you will ever see, but it's a good play. And that's what you want to see to some degree, right? It's just these solid plays, and we definitely saw some of those. And I also have to say, you know, this play is, I think, worth talking about. Where Because people might look at the box score and say, well, Kyler Murray, 13 for 23, only 145 yards, one touchdown, no interception. But the complete mindset changes if, they, if he hits this pass. If he hits this pass, all of a sudden, the yards per attempt goes way up. Part of why box score stats can be so misleading is it really is a team stat more than a player stat, and this is the exact reason why. Third and 14, so you're not expecting much here. The uh, Steelers are going to be in a cover two zone situation. As you see, Kyler is going to take the snap. He's going to look over the middle. He's going to fire over the middle, and you see there's... Honestly, I mean, right off the hand, this looks like a dangerous throw. This looks like a bad throw. You can see how it could work, you know, throw it over the middle and throw it further deep. But with two defenders in the area, you're really going to have to make a perfect throw for this to have a shot at a completion. However, a perfect throw it is. It was really, you know, it was... There's maybe some things make it look a little bit, uh, make the th catch a little bit tougher. There were defenders in the area, all that. You did have to make the catch, you know, in stride. Still, one you have to catch, though. It is. And if he, if that ball is caught, we're now talking about Kyler Murray having a great statistical day instead of playing well in a day where his stats weren't particularly great. That would have gone for 50 yards or so. Would have put him, you know, what, over nine yards per attempt on the day. Uh, so it's just kind of one of those weird box score things but at the end of the day when I evaluate a player I just care what you put on tape what how well did you actually play not necessarily what were the results of your plays and for me this is a good play by Kyler a great play by Kyler a beautiful throw unfortunately it was not complete let's go back and talk about Trey McBride a little bit here because I do think it's worth mentioning how well he's played and it's not just you know I talked about one play earlier where they're able to kind of get a uh, you know fine sort of consistent play, but I want to talk about more of his, uh, you know, just winning, just find a way to win, and this is a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Trey McBride on this play, so having a guy who could just win one-on-ones is really valuable, and also it's worth mentioning, it's a third down and six right here, so you know, for the Cardinals, I think they could use some receiver help, I do, I think getting a, you know, good number one receiver would go a long way, but, but if you can do that, it could also set up more scenarios for McBride to do what he's going to do on this play. Watch as Kyler's going to take the snap. He's going to, you know, look, he's looking towards McBride the whole way. This is where he wants to go. And you see, I mean, it's a little blurry here with the still frame, but there's not a ton of separation. It's not like McBride has completely burned the defender and he's, you know, five yards away, but it's one of those situations where for McBride, he doesn't need to get a huge window. It's kind of like, hey, I'm open a little bit, put the ball in a scenario where I can make a play. 
And Kyler's football on his throw, on it, it's it's beautiful. I mean, it's exactly where you want it to be. McBride's able to make the play, make a nice catch as well. These guys can do this thing. You can do this consistently. It wasn't even really a bad throw. Uh, or excuse me, it wasn't bad defense. It was just a great throw and a great catch. And as the old expression goes, uh, no matter how good a defense it is, a perfect throw and a perfect catch can beat it. And that's what happened there. I don't know if I said that expression exactly right, but you know what I mean. So that was a really good play by Kyler. Also, this play was ultimately one that did not count, but still uh, a very fun play. So it's going to be a third down and five, and it's man coverage. But what they're actually doing is Rondo Moore is going to be in motion from the offense's right to the offense's, uh, or excuse me, from the offense's left to the offense's right. And then he's going to essentially run towards the corner of the end zone here in a situation where, you know, they're thinking let's take a shot towards the end zone, which kind of makes sense. You're on the outside of field goal range. So, you know, well, yes, you would ideally like to get the first down. It's man coverage anyway, so having an opportunity down the field, uh, you know, the, the opportunity to get five yards might be about the same. Right when this play begins, though, watch Kyler and watch how with this sort of exotic pressure look, you're going to see him run and, th you know, throws off balance. There's an obvious pro and con to that, right? The pro gets you a little bit more time to make the throw exactly when you want to. Also, you don't have to be under pressure. You don't have to take a hit while making the throw because, you know, that's one thing that I feel people don't tend to talk about, but it is the other aspect of if you're a mobile quarterback, yeah, you're going to get hit more, but you can also protect yourself more in the pocket. So those are all the pros. The downside, of course, is now you're throwing off balance that far down the field. It's going to be really hard to put a catchable ball there. So does Kyler throw a catchable ball? Well, that would be underselling it. Watch, this is a beautiful throw, you know, perfectly where he wanted to put it so where Rondell Moore could make the grab and pick up a touchdown there. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great, great stuff from Kyler Murray. And, you know, for some people who were wondering, is Kyler Murray someone who uh, the Cardinals are going to stick around with long term? I think that, to me, he has shown, like, no, he still is Kyler Murray and also, uh, you know, with, with his contract. He's sticking around for a while. That just is what it is. Again, I think that it was more of a discussion when the Cardinals were first, you know, looking to pick first overall, and people were talking about Caleb Williams as is he, you know, the next Andrew Luck type of prospect. Well, then it's a discussion. But I think where they're at right now, I mean, you know, again, I'm not a huge college football fan. I tend to get my evaluations and stuff in after the NFL season. But it feels like I don't know. Uh, I know that there's that. Uh, uh, Marvin Harrison, the receiver, everyone's going crazy about. Uh, if you know, if you can get him, to me, that feels like a great opportunity here to get Kyler a uh, number one wide receiver for a long time because we saw how good Kyler was with Hopkins and kind of you know have things go that way. Uh, to me, that's how I view this, the Cardinals team moving forward. I do think Kyler is, you know, he's playing all right. He's playing all right, and, and I still think that maybe he's not playing MVP level Kyler Murray, but part of that probably is not the number one. You know, there's no number one receiver right now. He's doing what he can, though. So, uh, I don't know. I think Kyler Murray is playing pretty well. Uh, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.